One of the major themes on Control Paint is to break down difficult challenges into manageable pieces. And when digital artists start out, it seems like surface identification is a common weakness. So in this video, I'm going to show you a painting study that I do that practices painting difficult surfaces. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So when I say surface identification, what I mean is the way that light falls across different surfaces. For instance, if you were to take a look around your desk right now, it's likely that you've got some shiny objects and some surfaces that are more of a matte finish. Well, this has to do with the subtle surface texture. And when you're trying to paint realistic things, making sure you know which material is which will really help sell the image. I got the idea for this study when I looked at the way that 3D artists display and preview their materials. So what I'm going to set out to do is to take a 2D photo of a rock and to try and re-envision that same material wrapped around a three-dimensional sphere like this. So I won't just be copying from the original photo. Instead, I'll be sort of analyzing the shapes and really trying to learn something about it. And in that way, I'll hopefully remember it a little better next time when I want to put it in a real illustration. So what you're looking at here is the photo on the left side, and then on the right side I've cut a circle out of this layer, and I'll be drawing below it. So you can see as I draw here, it won't leave that circle. So as I look at this, I will be sampling some colors just to get a baseline. But I'm looking for things like, how's the transition between light and dark? And in this case, it's pretty smooth. It's a slow slow change from light to dark because this is a very matte finish. It's not very shiny. And I'm going to first think about the large scale value changes before I think anything about the low relief surface detailing. So at this point I'll probably make a new layer. I'll get a smaller brush, in this case the hard flat. I'm going to start to indicate those stripes of raised rock. So I've jumped ahead a bit here to the point where I'm ready to start defining the edge a little bit. Now if you see the edge in the photo, it's got sort of a stacked quality, like it was slowly eaten away by different levels of water. So I'll show this in my edge. So once again, the major idea here is that I'm looking at it and I'm learning something because I'm not simply copying the photo. It forces me to analyze the forms that I'm seeing and to wrap them around a three-dimensional surface. And hopefully by doing this, you get a better understanding of what the material is and how it re reacts to light. And then an added bonus of doing this sort of study is that you can save these things and always be doing different ones and after a while, you'll end up with a pretty large library of these materials, and you can use them for your own reference.